Fox Sports. We are Black Fox. We are Black It's time for Dodger Baseball. Live from Dodger Stadium, Prime Ticket presents the Dodgers as they take on the Chicago Cubs. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Saturday night to you, wherever you may be. Dodgers and Cubs in their fifth meeting of the year. They've split the previous four. Tonight it'll be Chris Volstad, the six foot eight inch right hander, just called up August 1st from Iowa. He is three and four lifetime against the Dodgers, 0 and 1 against them last year. Clayton Kershaw with a record of eight and six. He's won three of his last four. He is two and one against Chicago with a great earned run average of 1.7. The Giants are in Colorado. The Dodgers still pursuing one half a game back. And we'll get to this ball game and keep an eye on that one and a whole lot more coming up right after this. safe and affordable, it's probably a Hyundai. By AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. By CarMax, start the search for your next car at CarMax. And by Dodge. 
Hey, welcome back, everybody. Moments away from Dodger baseball and first pitch, Dodgers and the Cubs. And with Steve Lyons, Patrick O'Neill. All right, you have Clayton Kershaw. You, you, you always expect you're going to see something special. But now with Joe Bland making his start tomorrow, I kind of feel like we have a rotation that might be in place despite whatever speculation is out there. It is a very good rotation right now. And the way it sets up as we speak is Kershaw. If he's your number one, he clearly is. But the guys that are lined up behind him now, Bland. Then Capuano, who's been brilliant this season. Aaron Harang gets pushed back two days. And then Chad Billingsley, who's kind of jumping right into his stride right when they need him to. What I like about this ball club right now is that it's a completely different team than what was around really even two weeks ago. But bottom line is what they did is they strengthened their pitching rotation, mm -hmm. and they also are a much better offensive team than they were too. So you got both ends of it to be a much better club. Organization rewarding the players by acquiring Bland. They all like what he can bring and, and certainly what this guy, Clayton Kershaw, brings each and every night, giving you a chance to win. We'll see you for our postgame show. Finn has the call next. That combo at Jack in the Box for only $4.99 plus tax at participating stores. By San Manuel Indian Bingo and Casino, your place for summer excitement. By 76 Gas, we're on the driver's side. And by Time Warner Cable. Hi everybody and a very pleasant Saturday evening to you, wherever you may be. The Dodgers and the Chicago Cubs getting ready for their second game of the three-game series on a beautiful summer's evening. Not a cloud in the sky overhead. There are some humidity areas that have been around Southern California, even some light showers, but nothing here. So Dale Twayam comes in with his Cubs, trying to get them started to snap a three-game losing streak. The Cubs have won 43. They've lost 61, and their biggest problem has been winning on the road. The Cubs on the road are 16 and 37. There are a couple of games above 500 when they play at Wrigley Field. And as far as the Western Division is concerned, they've done pretty well. They've won eight and lost nine. So game two tomorrow, it will be Justin Germano for the Cubs, and it'll be the new Dodger, Joe Blanton, on the mound for Los Angeles. Here's the Cubs batting order. Starlin Castro opens up at shortstop and Darwin Barney at second base. Anthony Rizzo at first base hitting third. Alfonso Soriano hits cleanup in left field. Jeff Baker is in right field. Wellington Castillo will be the catcher. Joe Mather is in center field. Luis Valbuena 
is at third base, and on the mound will be Chris Volstaff. On the mound for the Dodgers, the 24-year-old All-Star and Cy Young winner Clayton Kershaw, with a record of eight and six, no record this year against the Cubs, two and one lifetime. Clayton has won three of his last four, four of his last six, and he is coming off a brilliant start where he shut out San Francisco. By the way, his earned run average against the Cubs, less than two, it's 1.7. So Clayton Kershaw prepares to pitch to Starling Castro, then Darwin Barney and Anthony Rizzo as the Cubs and Dodgers pick up on game two. Updates for you, the Phillies are leading the Diamondbacks two to nothing in the bottom of the seventh behind Roy Halladay, who's working on a three hitter. Giants, meanwhile, leading the Rockies five nothing in the fourth. Madison Bumgarner on the mound. There have been home runs by Melky Cabrera and Buster Cozy. First pitch to Starlin Castro is low, ball one. Castro hitting 282. He has 11 home runs, 52 runs batted in. Kershaw ready in the left hand to back, and it's swung on and missed, and the count one ball and one strike. Portions of center field and all of right field in brilliant sunlight, the rest of the infield and outfield in shade. Temperature, a wonderfully comfortable 73 degrees. One ball and one strike to Castro, who has a look at a pitch a little low. Ball two, two and one, the count to Starlin. Youngster who got off to such a magnificent start and checks in with 11 home runs. Castro, an all star for the second time, and he's only 22. Two one pitch is taken low, and the count runs to three and one. So Clayton Kershaw, who has done well his last few starts, trying to really bear down now as the Dodgers move in to the last two months of the season. The 3-1 pitch is a fastball fouled away upstairs to the right of the plate, and the count three and two. Stalin Castro last year was the youngest Cub All-Star in franchise history. And when you realize all the fine young players they had, you realize they really have a gem here. 3 2 pitch on the way, a ground ball backhanded on a sliding play by Loney, takes it to the bag for the out. So James Loney making a fine play, taking an extra base hit away from Castro. If that gets by, that's all the way down the line. So backhanded slide, and then Loney scampers to his feet, gets to the bag, one away. Darwin Barney coming up. Darwin Barney is hitting 269, five home runs, 31 runs batted in. He swings and hits one foul off to the right out of play. 0 and 1 the count. Darwin Barney, among other things, a solid all around ball player. And it is Korea night. Here at Dodger Stadium, here's the strike one pitch, and he swings, lifts a fly ball shallow in left center. Matt Kemp and Shane Victorino, and Shane makes a catch. On Korean night, Darwin Barney has a Korean grandfather and a Japanese grandmother. So with two down, the batter now, Anthony Rizzo. Rizzo, a very talented left-hand hitter. Batting 314, eight home runs, 20 runs batted in. Rookie of the month for the month of July. And he promptly swings, fouls it away, and the count 0 and 1. Anthony Rizzo was originally signed by the Red Sox. They dealt him away to get Adrian Gonzalez. And now here he is with the Cubs. Figures to be around a long time. Swings doesn't get it. And the count 0 and 2. Rizzo back up and waiting, and the strike two pitch is taken on the outside corner. Strike three call. So Rizzo, who struck out twice last night, gets bitten again. And now it's time for Chris Volstad, all six feet eight, heading for the mound. No score.
Pitchers retires the Cubs in order and we go now to the bottom of the first inning and here's Don Mattingly's lineup. Shane Victorino in left field and Mark Ellis at second base. Matt Kemp in center. Andre Ethier hits clean up in right. Hanley Ramirez at short. James Loney at first. Jerry Hairston Jr. at third. A.J. Ellis last night's hero behind the plate and on the mound Clayton Kershaw. On the mound at six feet eight, 195 pounds, Chris Volstad out of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. And big Chris fastball off the plate. One ball and no strikes to Shane Victorino. Volstad struggling. He has made 20 starts without a win. The 1 0 pitch is taken for a strike, and the count 1 and 1. Shane Victorino hitting 258, nine home runs. 40 runs batted in. Picked up his first hit with the Dodgers. Also had a stolen base. Lifts a fly ball to Soriano in left field. And just like that, one away. So Mark Ellis will be coming up. One out, base is empty. Bottom of the first inning, no score. Mark Ellis hitting 259. Four home runs, 16 runs batted in. Hitting in the number two slot early in the year before he was hurt. He was the ideal number two hitter. He takes a pitch high, ball one. The remarkable ability to go the other way and advance a runner. Also the patience if you have a rabbit on the leadoff spot. He takes a strike and they count one and one. Of course then he was hurt. And then the great experiment trying to fill that number two spot and the Dodgers use half the ball club. The one one pitch is swung on hit to right center field moving over to make the play easily is Jeff Baker though Ellis a long fly ball and we have two down in the first inning and Matt Kemp will be the batter. Matt Kemp, who's been playing very, very well, he's hitting 500 in his last six games with four doubles, a home run, five RBIs. This year, he's been a one man gang here. He's hitting 375 at Dodger Stadium with an on base percentage of 444. So he checks in, they have a modified shift, and the pitch low, ball one. Darwin Barney is not totally committed. He's almost, but not quite, behind second base. Joe Mather shading to right center, and the pitch to Matt is low. Two balls and no strikes. Last night, they overly shifted to the left side, and Hanley Ramirez really took advantage of it. We'll see what happens now. 2-0 to Matt Kemp. He backs away and the pitch is low, ball three. He is so hot. He has been doing so well. You certainly can't take a 3-0 and pitch automatic as a take. Not the way Matt's been swinging. 15 home runs, 39 runs batted in. He swings, doesn't get it, and they count 3-1 and one to that figure. Two out on fly balls. Dodgers had a lot of fly balls for five innings last night. Before they finally picked up some runs. 3 1 pitches swung on and foul back. 3 and 2 the count to Matt Kemp. The one area where Matt is behind, and it's all because of the bad leg, would be stolen bases. Matt has stolen three, that's all, and been caught three times. Waiting on deck, Andre Ethier. 3-2 pitch on the way, swung on, hammered foul down the left field line, deep in the lower deck. Bill Kemp is still there, 3-2. and two. Chris Volstad, you can imagine, is about as hungry a pitcher as he is around, trying to snap a 20-start winless streak. His record over that stretch, 0-12. He hadn't won since a year ago. And there's a ground ball wide, a third by the third base from Balbuena, but picked up by Castro, who throws to first in time. Nice play on a ball hit to the hole, but they put the squeeze on, and Castro gets his man. And at the end of an inning, no score.
Remember when Clayton Kershaw fell into a pattern where he had so much trouble in the first inning? Those patterns arise. Last night we were talking about Jeff Samarja. Now the middle three innings are somewhat of a nightmare for him. And sure enough, that's what chased Samarja the fifth and the sixth inning. Kershaw already delivers a strike to Alfonso Soriano. Well, to finish the point, opposing hitters are batting 160 in the first inning against Clayton Kershaw. Strike one pitch, check swing, half a wave, it'll be a strike. Dale Scott, the first base umpire. Soriano hitting 271. He did not hit a home run for 30 games. And then he's hit 19 since. He went to a much lighter bat. The pitch of the right hand batter a little high. One and two to Soriano. He's now second in the league, tied for fifth in the majors with the 19. One two pitch on the way, swung on and missed, and down goes Soriano. So Soriano, a big gun who's been pretty much silenced against the Dodgers. He has also struck out 95 times. The word in Chicago is he will not be a Cub by September 1. Uh, we'll see. So with one away, the batter now is Jeff Baker. Kershaw has struck out two. And Baker, right-hand batter, hitting 275 and takes ball one. One and oh, the count to Jeff. Now the 1 0 pitch on the way, and Baker hits one off first down the line, slicing away foul and back into the crowd. So one ball and one strike the count to Jeff Baker. Baker was born in Bad Kissingen in West Germany. He was quite a traveler. He lived in nine different cities growing up. You guessed it, his father was at the U.S. Army installing missile defense systems. He even moved over to Abu Dhabi. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch inside at the knuckles, ball two. Baker coming off the bench has done pretty well. He has five RBIs as a pinch hitter. Used to be with Colorado. Went to school at Clemson University. 2-1 pitch, and Baker fouls it back. When he was at uh, Colorado, his high in home runs would be 12. He hit over 20 twice at Colorado Springs. Jeff said that in the desert, soccer is very big, but not baseball. 2-2 two, two pitches, strike three call. So Kershaw has now struck out three in a row, getting Rizzo to end the first, getting Soriano and Baker here in the second, and now here comes Wellington Castillo, the catcher. So Castillo checking in, trying to start something with two out. He's from San Ysidro in the Dominican Republic. They signed him eight years ago. Right-hand batter, Kershaw, slow breaking ball, misses, ball one. Castro, 5'11", 210, hitting 211. He has two home runs, six runs batted in. Clevenger, who caught last night, one home run, 14 runs batted in. Next pitch fouled away, one and one the count. Castillo signing with the Cubs when he was 17. There were three other teams trying to sign him, the Phillies, the Cardinals, and the Diamondbacks. 1-1 one, one pitch on the way, and the right-hand batter hits a ground ball to short. Up with it there, Hanley Ramirez to throw him out. An easy 1-2-3 inning for Kershaw, who is now retired six in a row. And at the end of an inning and a half, no score.
gorgeous evening. 73 degrees, light breeze blowing left to right, and a nice crowd on hand, probably around 40,000. They'll be looking at Andre Epier, followed by Hanley Ramirez, and then James Loney against the big right-hander Chris Volstad. You can just imagine how big Volstad must look. He is 6 feet 8, standing on a 10-inch mound, and you're down there at home plate. So he is really, literally, and figuratively pitching down to the hitters. Epier hitting 288, 11 home runs, 61 runs batted in. Volstad into the windup, first pitch, a little roller foul outside of first, and the count 0 and 1. Andre last night, 1 for 4, a leadoff single. Epier has hit safely 16 of the last 19. The only thing slowing Andre up would be left hand pitching. He's hitting a very solid 330 against right handers. Strike one pitch, little flare to the shortstop Castro, and we have one out here in the second inning. So Clayton Kershaw has retired six in a row. Chris Volstad has retired four in a row. And here now is Hanley Ramirez. Ramirez, remember, hit his first home run as a Dodger on the 27th of July. He had won a 10-inning game. He hit it against Sergio Romo. Then last night, Hanley finally broke through here at home. He takes a strike. Ramirez had a double and a single. Last night, Darwin Barney was on the shortstop side of second base. Ramirez rolled one to the vacated area. Normally, it would have been a routine play. Instead, it went for a leg double to help defeat Jeff Samarja. The pitch to Ramirez, low, one ball, one strike. While we're talking about Darwin Barney out there at second base, Barney comes into this game having not committed an error in his last 90 games. 9-0, and that gets your attention, especially at a busy spot at second base. Ramirez hits one to deep right center, fading back to the track at the wall and making it look casual. Joe Mather, boy, did he make that look easy, and he actually hit the wall as he was gloving the ball. So Mather catches up to it, even though Ramirez gave it a ride, and we have two down in the second inning. So the batter now will be James Loney. To conclude the thought about Darwin Barney, one of the great names in baseball history at second base for the Cubs, Ryan Sandberg had a 90-game streak. So did Mike Fontenot. Loney, meanwhile, hitting 255, and James, first ball swinging, lifts it back of third down the line. It's Castro going out, and Starlin makes the catch. A difficult play, and that was pretty easy the way he played it. And down go the Dodgers. And at the end of two, no score.
inning, Clayton Kershaw and Chris Volstad. Joe Mather, we don't know much about him, but we do know he's got to be a fine outfielder. He shows bun, pulls the bat back, and it's inside, ball one. Mather going to the right center field wall, making the catch on that long out coming off the bat of Hanley Ramirez, and it made it look so easy. Mather originally drafted by the Cardinals. Swings, hits a little pop fly behind Loney, coming over as Ellis to make the catch. So one away, Kershaw has now retired seven in a row. That'll bring up Luis Valbuena. Valbuena last night doubled in the Cubs' only run. Stocky third baseman out of Venezuela. About 5'10 and at least 200 pounds. Left-hand batter signed originally by the Mariners. And the first pitch to Luis a strike in the count 0 and 1. He was involved in a very convoluted deal involving the Mets and the Indians and the Mariners and he finally wound up with the Cubs. He takes off the plate one ball one strike. No score top of the third inning. Don't forget the concluding game tomorrow and the newest Dodger Joe Blanton will be starting against Justin Germano. The 1 1 pitch off the plate low. Two and one the count to Valbuena, who first came up to the Mariners, then three years ago with the Indians, stayed with them until this year coming over to Chicago. Two one pitches swung on, fouled away off to the left, and the count two and two to Luis Valbuena. One away, third inning, no score. Valbuena, they say, can play anywhere on the infield. But he's at third base for the series. Now the 2 2 pitch on the way, and he fouls it off. Of course, any third baseman coming over to Chicago will be playing in the shadow and the memory of Ron Santo, who was just inducted into the Hall of Fame with Barry Larkin. A tough act to follow. Here's the 2 2 pitch on the way. Valbueno takes low, and the count goes all the way. One away, top of the third, no score. Kershaw has retired seven in a row. Volstad is retired six in a row. And the 3 2 pitch is swung on and fouled away. One of the keys we've always been following of late, talking about a pitcher's mastery, how many swings and misses, and how many swings and foul balls. Kershaw has three strikeouts. His 3-2 pitch on the way. Valbuena takes ball four. So that breaks the string at seven. And will bring up Chris Volstad with that six foot eight inch Chris strike zone. Say so be sure to follow the Dodgers with MLB.com at bat 12 for your iPhone, iPad, Blackberry, Android, and Windows Mobile. You can get live audio, pitch tracking, video highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826. Or visit Dodgers.com for details. Dodgers look bunt, but the throw goes to first to take a step away from Valbuena. Chris Volstad was called up August the 1st from Iowa in his earlier go with the Cubs. He did have a sacrifice. Right hand batter shows bunt, drops it nicely. Kershaw looks at second and goes to first. Everybody in the ballpark rooting for the Dodgers groaned because they thought Clayton had a play at second. However, after a long look, he threw to first. So Volstead does his job, advances his man, and that leaves it up to Starlin Castro. And looking at the freeze, you could see Kershaw had plenty of time and then opted to go to first. So we'll see just how important that is. Kershaw with runners in scoring position and two outs has been extremely difficult. The league is hitting only 115 against him. So let's see he's up against a tough young hitter in Starlin Castro who fouls it back and the count 0 and 1. We told you the story about the minor league manager who had Starlin Castro and he wrote to the Cubs. And in the course of the letter talking about Castro's talent, 
He said I can guarantee you one thing. Whatever team he winds up playing for in the big leagues will be a contender as long as he's playing for that team. The strike one pitch is low one and one. Well it hasn't worked for the Cubs. However the manager also said I only wrote that about one other player in all my years and that other player was Derek Jeter of the Yankees. So that puts Castro in some very precious area if his name is linked in any way shape or form with Derek Jeter. Out of his stretch goes Castro. Uh, <laughs> Our left hander Kershaw on the pitch, a slow roll of wide a third on and nicely is Hurston to make the play. So no runs, no hits, a man left. Kershaw bearing down with a runner in scoring position. At the end of two and a half, no score. Third inning, Chris Volstad so far retired six in a row with balls hit in the air. Of the six outs, only one ground ball, five balls to the outfield, and one popped up. So Hairston followed by A.J. Ellis and then Clayton Kershaw. Volstad made six pitches in the second inning, though he's only made 19. Clayton has now made 37 in the first pitch at the knuckles. Hairston gets him out of the way. Ball one, one and oh. Nice story in the LA Times about Jerry Hairston, a man gifted, not so much as a starting player, but he can play anywhere and play well. He takes a strike and the count one and one. So Jerry Hairston has contributed from just about every position. And he's hitting 283 with four home runs, 26 RBI. He takes a pitch high. It would not surprise anybody if one day Hairston puts on the gear and goes behind the plate. Because he's played almost everywhere else except pitch and catch. Volstad, both feet on the rubber, looks down to get a sign. And the big right hander deals two and one. That's fouled away off to the right. And the count two and two. Dodgers and Cubs. The Cubs played the Dodgers tough last year. Wound up splitting six. Dale Swim now has the reins after Mike Quaddy has moved on. Of course, for the Cubs, they not only moved managers, they were a one in a million organization years ago. The 2 2 pitch, hard ground line smash at third base by Valbuena. Val Buena handling a bullet off the bat of Jerry Hairston. And just like that, one away. And the batter now will be A.J. Ellis. There was a time when you talked about the Chicago Cubs and their manager. 
You talked about the College of Coaches. Believe it or not, they had more than one man running the team in the dugout. Admittedly, you have to go back in the 60s, but that's exactly what they had. A.J. Ellis takes a strike, and the count on one. Big night for Ellis last night. Two home runs and a single. The first career two home run game. He has a look and pays the price of another strike. Although, as I'm sure if you've been following the Dodgers, you know he's been a, an accomplished two-strike hitter. No score, bottom of the third. One out. Volstad works quickly and comes back high. One and two the count. Seven in a row retired by the lanky right-hander. A.J. with Kershaw hitting back of him. And the one-two pitch on the way is swung on and fouled down the right field line out of play. And the count stays one and two. So the Cubs and Dodgers split six last year. So far they split the four. Last year they did it in reverse. Dodgers won two out of three in Chicago. This year the Cubs won two out of three at home. The one-two pitch low and away. Two and two the count to A.J. Ellis. Chris Volstad, big boy out of Palm Beach Gardens in Florida. Right-handed deals, fastball hit to short. Castro sets for the long throw, plenty of time. And we have two down here in the third, no score. Say, so, you know, tomorrow at 110, Dodgers and Cubs, fans with their first 30,000 tickets at the game, receive a retro Dodgers snapback cap, compliments of wonderful pistachios. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. So Volstad has retired eight in a row, and here's Clayton Kershaw. No score in the third. Volstad ready, deals fastball in for a strike. Kershaw hitting 114. Has a look at a pitch off the plate. Kershaw has four hits. He very handy when the sacrifice, but he has two out here and hits a bullet into center field for a base hit. So Clayton Kershaw, a two out line drive single to center. Base hit number one, nothing fluky about that. It was an echo going by Volstad, and that'll bring up Shane Victorino. So Kershaw held on at first. Volstad ready now to pitch to Victorino. Shane flied to left field first at bat. Volstad leans in to get a look. Now the tall right-handed delivers. Victorino has a look, and it's a strike. 0 and 1. Volstad, basically fastball, a curve, change up, which he throws to left-hand hitters, and he started to throw a slider in spring training a year ago. 0 and 1. The count to Victorino, hitting left-handed, ground ball to short. Castro going high to a second baseman just in time. What a play that was! Castro having to spot a high soft throw and it was up to Darwin Barney to catch up to it and hit the bag and at the end of three no score.
wireless receiver from AT&T U-verse. Visit AT&T.com slash free your TV. Rethink possible. By El Pollo Loco, crazy you can taste. And by the full line of fuel-efficient vehicles at your Southern California Toyota dealer. Fourth inning, no score in the ball game. It'll be Darwin Barney followed by Anthony Rizzo and Alfonso Soriano. Kershaw running the bases, having had a base hit, but he's out there on the mound ready. For Darwin Barney, he likes Wrigley Field. He's hitting 322 at home, but only 217 on the road. The road is just killing the Cubs. The first pitcher strike. For Chicago, they're three games above 500 at home in the friendly Carn Pines, but Starlin Castro and company. They are 21 games under 500 on the road. Their bullpen has also hurt them. Their bullpen has lost 17. So it's a club struggling for sure. One ball and one strike. One and two. For the Cubs in a tough division, they've not only lost three straight, they are 21 games behind the Cincinnati Reds. One and two the count. No score. Fourth inning. Fouled away. Darwin Barney as we said has that. 90 game errorless streak among other things. Barney doesn't usually hang around much at the plate. And fouls that away. When you break it all down over the year, he averages less than four pitches per at bat. 5'10, about 175. 26 years old, he'd be 27 in November. Went to school at Oregon State. And promptly hits it into left field for a base hit. So Darwin Barney opens up the fourth. With a line single to left, and the batter now will be Anthony Rizzo. For Darwin Barney, he has stolen six out of seven. So we'll see what happens with Rizzo, who struck out in the first inning. Rizzo with eight home runs, 20 runs batted in, hitting 311. Oh, and one. Kershaw, who has won three out of four, four out of six, coming off the shutout against San Francisco, trying to win his ninth. No balls, one strike. And they're going to keep an eye on Darwin Barney, you can bet. For Anthony Rizzo, he has done the bulk of his hitting against right hand pitching, understandably, as a youngster. The 23 on the 8th of August, so that's just around the corner. Rizzo out of Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. Drafted by the Red Sox five years ago. One ball and one strike. Interesting too. Living in Florida, Anthony Rizzo became a huge fan of Hanley Ramirez. And of course now he has the chance to play opposite his idol. Hanley the shortstop looking for business. Barney at first, nobody out in the fourth. No score. One and one. Fouled off to the left hand of play. No score. Each side with one out. Kershaw a two out single in the third. Barney a lead off single in the fourth. Kershaw has done a very good job. Controlling the running game. 
as he looks over at Barney. Breaking ball up two and two the count. The percentage of success in stealing bases against Clayton Kershaw is only 55 percent. And along with that he's picked off 33. Barney as we said pretty successful base dealer. Rizzo meanwhile slow ground ball to Lonnie steps on the bag close to second too late. James Loney got his foot on the bag that removed a force play at second they had to have a tag down there and Barney is safely in. So Rizzi grounding out to James Loney. Loney did well to keep that foot and make an off balance throw but the tag was too late. So we have one out a runner at second and Alfonso Soriano checking in. Soriano going up against Kershaw has two home runs against him and batting 375 going into this game. So a threat at the plate. Fastball fouled away came right at him at 93. 0 and 1 the count to Alfonso Soriano. Soriano who as I said is rumored to be on the move before September 1 signed an eight year deal coming over to the Cubs for one hundred and thirty six million dollars. Oh and one account. One and one. One of the things Soriano has done hitting in the cleanup spot he's grounded into 13 double plays. One and one account. Low, low, and the count two and one. Alfonso Soriano with 325 home runs. That's close to the great Joe DiMaggio who hit 361. However, Soriano has struck out 1,336 times. DiMaggio in his career, 369. Can you believe it? That's a strike. Two and two. Soriano struck out in the second inning. He has struck out 95 times this year. Two balls and two strikes. Alfonso from San Pedro de Macari, which pretty famous town, produced among others Pedro Guerrero. Two two pitch. Hit foul. Still two and two. So Clayton Kershaw trying to put him away. When Soriano was with the Yankees, he had some big years. He had 39 home runs, 36 home runs. When he went to Washington, he had 46 home runs. That gave him the big contract, and he has never hit more than 24. Two and two. Fastball, and that's going to drop in left center field for a base hit. It will also roll to the wall. So scoring is Barney. Into second base goes Soriano. And it is one to nothing Chicago. That will also bring up a rather interesting point. Since middle of June, if the Cubs score first against the opponent, their record is 18 and 3. Jeff Baker. And here they are on the board leading one to nothing. So a fly ball doubled through the gap. Soriano picks up his man Barney. That was a big play. Remember Loney stepped on the bag. That meant they had to have a tag at second. They couldn't get it. And that run scores on the double. That's not blaming Loney. It's just the way it unraveled. Now the pitch to Jeff Baker is high. Ball one. One and oh. So the Cubs jump out one nothing thanks to the double by Soriano and the single by Darwin Barney. Jeff Baker hitting 273 and that evens it up one and one. Baker struck out in the second inning. 
Jeb at one time played for Colorado and that reminds us to double check. The Giants were apparently breezing against the Rockies last we checked. One and one account to Jeff Baker. Colorado struggling. Rockies are 18 games back of the Giants. They'll be here Monday. One and two the count. The Dodgers, let's face it, they have to cash in on the schedule right now. In other words, they have a three-game series with the Cubs. They're struggling. Followed by three with the Colorado Rockies. They are struggling. Three more against the Miami Marlins, and they are struggling. So they've got to make up some ground and pick up a lot of wins over that nine-game stretch. Fooled and swinging badly is Baker to strike out. That would be the fourth strikeout for Clayton Kershaw. Soriano holding at second as Baker was badly fooled. And the battle will be Wellington Castillo. Talking about the Giants, they are leading the Rockies 6-1 to one in the sixth inning. One to nothing Chicago in the fourth inning. And the first pitch fouled away down the line by Castile. 0 oh and 1 the count. Wellington Castillo is bright enough to begin taking English courses when he first turned professional. A smart idea. Signed when he was just 17. 0 oh and 1 the count. Fastball foul back 92. Again, we're starting to wonder about pitches and swings and swings and misses. So far, swings and misses 5. Swings and fouls 18. Now that's kind of an indication that Kershaw is not overpowering people and that's one of the more interesting things we've been following all year. So let's see 0 oh and 2 to Castillo. Curveball lifted in the air. Ethier's at the other end of it. And that'll be that. However, one run, two hit, one left. Alfonso Soriano drives it in, and it's one to nothing, Chicago. to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Lite. Cubs take a one to nothing lead on the single by Barney then that play taking off the force followed by the double from Soriano and the Cubs lead one to nothing. Chris Wolstad can you imagine how he feels walking on the grass behind the mound. He's actually leading in a game. He's made 20 starts without a win. 
His record over that 20 game span is 0 and 12. He has just been called back up from the minor leagues and he actually has a lead. Mark Ellis will start it off and ball one followed by Kemp and then Ethier. For Kershaw he worked a little harder than he wanted in the fourth inning. He has now made 60 pitches. The next one a strike in the count. Of course 60 pitches in four innings 15 pitches an inning. 135 in a game would be too much. One and two the count now to Mark Ellis. Short trying to win his ninth. He was brilliant remember against the Giants when he shut them out. Two and two to Mark hitting 258. Four home runs 16 runs batted in. Fastball and he just goes the other way with it. It was a 93 mile an hour fastball on the outside part of the plate. And Mark just reached across and went with it. Though Ellis singles to right and the batter is Matt Kemp. One of the things that uh, Chris Volstad carries into the game is that long stretch without a win etc. Dale Swam was saying that psychologically he has to forget about anything that has passed. He can't go out there saying I haven't had a one I'm I'm over 12 I've been 20. That just puts more pressure on him. So he's just trying to stay within himself leading one nothing in the fourth inning period. Fastball strike at 91 inside corner at the knees. One run two hits for the Cubs. No runs two hits for the Dodgers. Interesting that the Cubs have shut him down. Ellis tying run at first. Nobody out. And a mile high fly ball to right center field. Running parallel to the wall, reaching up and watching it go off his glove over the fence is Joe Mather. And it is two to one in favor of the Dodgers. Mather, who had made a fine catch early in the game on a long drive by Ramirez. When up in the air the ball hit his glove as his glove hit the wall and the ball popped out and over. It wasn't like he had made a catch and lost it. It just went off his glove and that tremendous power of Matt Kemp. Take a look. The glove goes up. The ball hits the glove spins around. It will come down and land on the other side. So Mather shakes his head as he goes back to his position and for Matt Kemp. He gives the Dodgers a two to one lead. For Matt Kemp, 16 home runs, 41 runs batted in. Andre Ethier takes a strike. So for Mather, how near and yet so far. And for Chris Bolstad, a big problem psychologically now. He's down two to one. One ball and one strike to Andre Ethier who lined out the shortstop but actually that just described the trajectory the ball was not hit hard. Here in the inning Ellis took a fastball to right field for a base hit. And then Matt Kemp is able to dig down and with that tremendous power of his hit it to right center and Mather tried and couldn't quite do it. Two and one to count. They're going to check no swing three and one last night you may or may not remember Brian LaHare was playing right field and Kemp hit one and LaHare went up against the scoreboard and caught it. It wouldn't have gone out but it would have certainly been for extra bases and of course Matt had already returned the favor last night. He went up against the center field wall to take an extra base hit away from Soriano. So Ethier following the home run gets a walk. And the batter will be Hanley Ramirez. So for the Cubs, that lead was short live. Wellington Castillo 
who studied English, now makes it pay off as he goes out to talk to Volstaff. Hanley waiting at the plate, hitting 247, 15 home runs. 10 games with the Dodgers. Hanley with nine hits and 10 RBIs. In 14 games against the Cubs, he's hitting better than 360. Two for four last night with a double and a single. He has five home runs. He has scored 14, and he has 12 RBIs. At the knuckles, ball one. So Ramirez, in his last 14, whether he's playing for the Marlins or even that first game as a Dodger, he has worn the Cubs out. Ramirez has never faced Volstad until tonight. Two to one Dodgers, bottom of the fourth. Hard ground ball at third. Balbuena up with it, down to second for one. They'll turn it for the double play. So Ramirez hits one around the horn, 5 4 3. That takes Ethier off the base pads. And the batter will be James Loney. Dodgers two runs three hits Cubs one run two hits James Loney swinging the bat and playing with the glove very well as always last night had a double in four trips but he also hit a ball hard and lined out to center field last night hitting just under 300 since the all-star break last year he really caught on fire after the break ball one Loney first time up popped up to short 0 for one James two home runs 29 runs batted in ball two outfield about straight away they bring Soriano up a bit in left and the infield very deep with both Castro and Barney on the rim in there Bill Miller is the plate umpire for tonight. Bill in his 14th year as a pro. Received a Bachelor of Arts in History from UCLA. Next pitch fouled in the dirt. Bill Miller born in California. He started umpiring in the seventh grade. So he found a profession very early in life. Two and two. Off speed looked like a straight change whacked into center. So Loney staying within himself on the change up singles to center and the battle will be Jerry Hairston. So in the inning given a one to nothing lead. Jerry Hairston Jr. Volstad has given up a walk two singles and a home run. Double play has lightened the load a little bit but Matt Kemp took him downtown to give the Dodgers the lead. So here's Hairston. Hit the ball very hard a blur from his bat to Valbuena's glove. Jerry hitting 282. Hairston has played for a lot of teams including the Cubs. Jerry takes a strike. He was with the Cubs in 05 and 06. Spent a lot of time with the Orioles. That was the team that drafted him. Then he went with the Rangers and the Reds. Even popped up with the Yankees. Then the Padres. Back to the Nationals. Then the Brewers. And here he is wearing the blue. 0 and 1. Little ground ball to short. Castro quickly down to Barney. They get the force on Loney. And that's that. So the Dodgers pick up two. And at the end of four. Dodgers two. Cubs one. Big home run by Mac Kemp.
September 6, 1996. After being diagnosed with cancer in May and being told he'd no longer be able to play baseball, Brett Butler returns to the lineup just four months later. I remember digging into the box and just overwhelmed with emotion. I started crying. And I stepped out and took off my helmet and kind of acknowledged the fans and again, something I'll never forget. Joe Mather. Dodgers turn it around and take a two to one lead. Chris Wolstad made 21 pitches, the most so far for him. And now Clayton Kershaw, who had a 23 pitch inning, maybe as a result of running the bases, he'll start off against Mather, Balbueno, and Wolstad. That's a strike to Joe. Mather, who made that wonderful catch early on the ball hit by Hanley Ramirez, then has one go off his glove for a home run. 0 oh and 1 to count. So Matt Kemp off to the races. Boy, has he just been tearing the cover off the ball, especially here at Dodger Stadium. One ball and one strike. Mathers a big fella, although he reduces himself a little at the plate. He bends at the knees and waist. He's 6'4, 215 pounder. Third round pick by the Cardinals 11 years ago. Just turned 30 years old. And two and two. Mather. In the big leagues, he had one home run last year for the Braves. He has four this year for the Cubs. Two and two. Fastball. Mark Ellis is there. And that'll do it for Joe. One away here in the fifth inning. And the batter will be the third baseman, Valbuena. Time for you to think a little bit. You ever hear the name Hack Wilson? Well, he played for the Cubs. He holds the major league record for RBIs in one year. He had 191 RBIs in 1930. All right. Which two Dodgers have had 140 or more RBIs in one year? Here's Valbuena who walked. Hack Wilson was not very big at all. The 1 0 pitch is high. If I had to guess, trying to remember, Hack Wilson was maybe 5 9. But boy, what power to knock in 190 runs. That's a strike, 2 and 1. Kershaw, 8 and 6 coming in, 2 and 1 lifetime. Again, Chicago with a brilliant earned run average of 1.7. Check swing, they look. No swing, says C.B. Buckner. And they count three and one. One out, fifth inning, two to one, Dodgers. Giants are breezing in Colorado so far, six to one. And that's a strike, three and two. Joe Blanton, who just joined the Dodgers, he will be the starting pitcher tomorrow afternoon against Justin Germano. Final game of the year with the Cubs. Now back. Don Mattingly decided to give Aaron Harang a little rest. So Joe Blanton, the last time he was at Dodger Stadium, he was just great for Philadelphia. Strike after strike after strike. Beat the Dodgers 3-2. We'll see how he goes against the Cubs. So Capuano will stay in the rotation where he figured to be. He will definitely pitch Monday as Chris just sits back and relaxes. He'll go up against the Rockies. And then Aaron Harang, who had been earlier announced as Sunday's pitcher, will pitch Tuesday. Another foul ball. Though Valbuena continues to foul him off. 
Kershaw now made 74 pitches. Three and two. Very high. So he walks Valbena for the second time. And Volstad will be coming up in the same spot. One out, Valbueno at first. And Volstad will try to bunt and move him along. Six feet eight. Of course, there have been several pitchers that big and a couple even bigger at six nine. He bunts in the air, foul over the screen, and the count 0 and 1. Whenever there's an extremely tall player, we figure that there are youngsters watching and they hear, wow, he's six feet eight. I wonder what the tallest man who ever lived. How tall was he? Well, if you have youngsters nearby and they ask you the question, his name was Robert Wadlow. He was out of Illinois. And he was indeed tall. The bunt, good one. Picked up by Loney, and he puts to Ellis. Robert Wadlow from Illinois. I think his height was like eight feet eleven inches and one tenth of an inch. Unfortunately, at that size, he didn't live very long. I think he passed on at 23. So Valbena, the tying run at second with two out, and here's Starlin Castro trying to pick him up. Castro, two ground balls, 0 for 2, hitting 281. 11 home runs, 52 runs batted in. We mentioned it last night. One of the first jerseys Starlin Castro ever got as a rookie going to his first team. And the equipment manager said, Well, we have, uh, let's see, how about number 13? He said, Oh, that's fine. And the manager said, you know, that's an unlucky number. And he looked at him and said, really? The manager said, yeah, I said, nah, I'll take it. So he's worn 13 ever since. Hanley Ramirez wearing 13 as well. Ramirez, however, next year will wear a single digit uniform number. He wore number two, I believe, all his time in Florida. Dodgers had trouble giving Hanley a single digit number because number one is retired, that's Pee Wee Reese. Number two is retired, worn by Tommy Lasorda. Number four is retired, that was Duke Snyder. Two and one. Number three is worn by Adam Kennedy. Number five, Juan Uribe. Jerry Hairston wears six, Loney seven. Victorino is wearing the manager's number. Victorino is wearing number eight. Don gave that to Shane. So Mattingly now wears number 12. D. Gordon wears nine. So there was no single digit number to give Hanley. Three and one the count to Starlin Castro with Darwin Barney on deck. Pitch count now up to 81. So he follows a 23 pitch inning and he's going to make at least 21 here in the next. So 45 pitches in the last two innings. Three and one to Castro. And fouled upstairs off to the right. So they're swinging and fouling, and the count three and two. Kershaw has struck out four. He had three in a row Rizzo in the first, Soriano and Baker in the second. Then he got Baker again in the fourth.
Dodgers two Cubs one. Valbuena the tying run at second two out. And strike three called as Castro was ready to go to first base. So no runs no hit a man left at the end of four and a half innings. Always seem to play the Dodgers tough. Had a fine crowd on hand. We had over 40,000, 43,000 last night. And I would hazard a guess the crowd will be over 40 tonight. And if possible, hope you'll be with us tomorrow. Joe Blanton and Justin Germano. If you can't make it out here, we'll be on KCAL 9. A.J. Ellis followed by Clayton Kershaw and then Shane Victorino. Philly shut down the D-backs three to nothing. That's fouled away. Roy Halladay went seven for his first win since the 17th of May. While he was sidelined, the Phillies went 14 and 27. By the way, Carlos Ruiz has foot trouble. They had to put him on the D.L., they started a rookie catcher, Eric Kratz, and Eric hit a home run to support Halliday. Nice way to break in. Ruiz has plantar fasciitis. That's popped up. Castro at the other end. One down in the fifth. Clayton Kershaw coming up. Kershaw has had two tough innings, 23 pitches in the fourth and 25 pitches in the fifth. That brings his pitch count up to 83. So it's now up to 16 pitches an inning. That's a strike. Kershaw hitting 139. In counting Kershaw's pitches, you wonder about most pitches in a game. He's had 117 a couple of times. Against Philadelphia, he made 120, and now he comes up, believe it or not, with his second hit. Dodgers may not be so happy about that, as Kershaw will have to run the bases again. So Kershaw, two for two. And Shane Victorino will be coming up five times in Clayton's career. He's had a two hit game. Kershaw with two hits tonight has six. 
Victorino has flied to left, hit into a fourth play, switch hitter batting left handed. One out, two to one, Dodgers, bottom of the fifth. In there, 0 and 1. The flying Hawaiian from the island of Maui. And as they say over there with great feeling, Maui no Kaoi. Which they tell me means Maui is the best. Little ground ball. Barney waits for the second hop, gets a force, and that's about it. You're not going to double up Victorino, especially on a slow ground ball. Remember the trivia question? We were talking about Hack Wilson. He had 191 RBIs for the Cubs. Which two Dodgers have had 140 or more? Tommy Davis in 1962 and Roy Campanella in 1953. Roy Campanella wearing number 39 right into the Hall of Fame. Tommy Davis isn't going to make the Hall of Fame, but he was without a doubt one of the top hitters we have ever seen in that one year. He was really awesome, as the kids would say. That was a great way to baptize Dodger Stadium. 1962 with Tommy Davis and the Dodgers eventually losing that year to the San Francisco Giants. That's a strike. It's the same Tommy Davis with all of his great hitting suffered a broken ankle in May in 1965. And everybody in Los Angeles said, well, there goes the pennant. And the Dodgers reached down into the minors, brought up a colorful character by the name of Sweet Lou Johnson. And the next thing you know, they won everything in sight. Oh, and one to Mark. Oh, and two. Two out, two to one Dodgers. Ellis got a fastball on the outside part of the plate, stroked it into right field for a base hit. We'll see about Victorino with two out and an 0 and 2 count. No way he's gone. And Ellis, meanwhile, pulls one down the left field line and watching it is Buckner and it goes foul. CB Buckner right on the line and Ellis comes back 0 and 2. No so Victorino back to the bag at first. Of course 0 and 2 you're always worrying about a pitch out. Victorino has stolen 25 out of 29. He had a stolen base in the seventh inning last night. Not gone. Breaking ball off the plate. One and two the count to Ellis. On deck, Matt Kemp. Dodgers two, Cubs one, bottom of the fifth, two out. With Mark Ellis at the plate. You figure that Darwin Barney would be covering if Victorino takes off. Ellis waiting on the pitch and then hits it inside out foul. It's grammatically incorrect, but it certainly is a perfect way to describe a hitter waiting on a pitch. They always tell the hitter, don't get ahead of yourself. Let the ball come in on you and Ellis got that breaking ball, hit it inside out, and the count remains one and two. Two and two. Ellis does a stiff wristed pump with the bat, and it brings to mind a strange thing 
And that's the young outfielder now with the Giants, Hunter Pence. Hunter Pence takes normal pumps, but then just before he gets up to the plate, he takes these two real stiff wristed. It must be to loosen up the upper torso. Ellis isn't doing it now. He's rolling the top hand over. Two and two. There goes Victorino. Check swing, throw into center, but it's strike three. It is strike three on Mark Ellis, and the inning is over. At the end of five, Dodgers two, Cubs one. In basketball and in football, and that it's not important in baseball. Well, don't be so sure. For instance, during the wartime, they had a curfew. On this day in 1942, Dodgers playing the Giants, 1 1 tie, bottom of the ninth. Pee Wee Reese hit a grand slam home run. Dodgers won the game 5 to 1. Oh, no. We'll tell you why. Let's go back to this one. And first pitch in there for a strike. 0 and 1 to Darwin Barney. In 1942, the early days of World War II, they had a curfew. And right after Pee Wee Reese hit the grand slam, and everybody was celebrating, the clutch home run was wiped out because of the curfew. High fly ball, very playable. Kemp and Victorino, two center fielders out there. Oh, it's Shane. One away in the sixth inning. Because of the wartime curfew, the score reverted back to the last inning, and the game ended in a 1 1 tie. And by the way, it was the second game in a row that was called because of the curfew. And because of that, that was the last twilight contest ever played at the Polo Ground. Little roller. Charging to make the play is Ellis and does. You know, it's not too late for Dodger season tickets. You can purchase today. You'll receive all of this year's new benefits, partial postseason rights as well, and great locations between the bases still available. To purchase, visit Dodgers.com slash season tickets. So quickly, two out here in the sixth inning which is exactly what Kershaw needs. He's only made four pitches to get the two outs. Ball one to Soriano, who struck out and then doubled in the gap in left center to score Barney with the Cubs run in the fourth inning. Two and oh the count. That was a good fastball, 94. Two and one. (laughs) 
Soriano has become certainly a feast or famine hitter. His high in strikeouts, oh, as many as 160 a couple of years ago with the Nationals. Three and two. Alfonso Soriano, 34 years old. From the Dominican, signed out of the Japanese League by the New York Yankees. And he goes. So Soriano strikes out a second time. A quick inning for Kershaw, and the Dodgers still lead two to one. of one swing of the bat and one glove at the other end of the contact. The glove off the glove and over the wall. Mather got his hand on it but couldn't keep it and a fan behind the wall wound up with the ball. Kemp wound up with his 16th home run and the Dodgers wound up with a 2-1 to one lead. Mather felt terrible about it and of course it hurt Chris Volstad who is still looking for a win. So Matt, remember, missed over 50 games. So you really can't compare last year and this. 0 and 1. Matt batting 353. 16 home runs, 41 runs batted in. 0 and 1. Matt's had over 200 at bats, and he's only struck out 40 some odd times. For a guy with his power, that's pretty remarkable. I mean, you get into almost a Todd Helton type hitter. Helton in his prime would usually walk more times than he would strike out, and he'd still hit 40 home runs. Fouled at the plate. One thing, too, it seems, Matt is not chasing the slider off the plate nearly as much in his earlier days. Of course, watch, now that I've said that, he'll chase the slider, but uh, one and two. Fastball on the hands at 91. So the development of Matt Kemp really been remarkable. Matt last year 39 home runs the year before 28. 
The year before that, 26. One and two. Fouled off. Two runs, five hits for the Dodgers. Ellis singled a right, a three and two fastball, and he just went with it. And then Matt Kemp homered off the glove of center fielder Joe Mather. The Cubs run a single by Darwin Barney and a double by Soriano to pick him up. And that's it. In on the hands to strike out. It was a fastball to take care of Kemp. By the way, the Giants are leading the Rockies 8 to 3 in the top of the eighth inning. The Colorado Rockies, of course, without Todd Helton, without Troy Tulowitzki, that is a totally different team. They are going to be 15 games under 500 at home. They're already 14 games under 500 on the road. So that's the kind of a team the Dodgers should welcome to Dodger Stadium, but more importantly, they have to beat. One ball and no strikes. Down the line and foul, one and one. In the bullpen, Alberta Cabrera, a right hander, and the left hander, Scott Main. They're loosening up. We saw both of them last night. Heath here lined out and walked 0 for 1. Two to one Dodgers were in the bottom of the sixth. Volstad, to use the current phrase, is pitching to contact. Getting his outs did strike out Kim. Two and one. Three and one. Three and two. When the Cubs come up in the seven, Bolstad is due to bat fifth. His pitch count's fine. He's only made 84 pitches. And for Bolstad, that's quite an accomplishment to stay in the game. And I'm not being sarcastic. Stay in the game, and he strikes out Ethier. So that's not a bad night, no matter what, to strike out Kemp and Ethier. Two down. Well, the thing about Volstad, in talking about what a tough time it has been for him, he has made only one start where he made more than 100 pitches. In his last two starts, he's thrown fewer than 80 pitches. And tonight, he's still very much in it. And he has worked 85. So now, Hanley Ramirez. The modified ship, they're not going to move Barney all the way. They were burned last night. Volstad right now. Pitch count up to 86. Ramirez, a long fly ball. Matha made a wonderful play, running parallel to the wall in center field. Then Hanley grounded into a double play. So Joe made the wonderful play on Ramirez and then had a play that will bother him for a while. The one that went off his glove. Of course a poor outfielder doesn't even come close to getting his glove on the ball. One and two. Volstad not overpowering but he's still throwing 90. With two out. Having made 84 pitches. Moved it on up. One and two to Hanley Ramirez. 
High chopper to the left. Castro gloves throws. Thanks to a big stretch by Anthony Rizzo. Fine play to get Hanley Ramirez. So down go the Dodgers. And at the end of six, it's two to one Dodgers. To Kershaw, neither one dominating. As you can see, a tough two to one game. However, for the Cubs, they are struggling offensively with only two hits, and that's the big difference. So it'll be Jeff Baker, then Wellington Castillo. Ground ball to third. Kirsten makes the play, one away. So Baker doesn't hang around. That did Kershaw a favor because that pitch was his 94th. So one away, and here is Wellington Castillo. Castillo grounded a short fly to right, 0 for 2. Steve Clevenger caught last night. Left hand batter in there for a strike, 0 and 1. Joe Mather hitting back of Castillo. That's a strike, 0 and 2. Just off the plate. Clayton Kershaw has a half a dozen strikeouts. Interesting that Volstad has three, and he got him consecutively and some tough hitters, too. Volstad struck out Ellis in the fifth and then proceeded to strike out Kemp, followed by Ethier in the sixth. The only three strikeouts that Chris has. Two and two. Ball three. The Cubs play some tough ball games. At home, they're okay. They are nine and six in one run games. On the road, however, it's become a nightmare. That's going to be hit to center, base hit. The Cubs on the road in one run decisions, they have won two games and lost. 12. So here comes Joe Mather with a tying run Castillo at first. Mather has popped up and grounded out. Joe will now be ready to look at Kershaw's 101st pitch. Mather, four home runs, 15 runs batted in. 
He is big, but he is not a power hitter at all. 0 and 1. He had nine home runs last year for the Braves, and that certainly would be a high. Born in Idaho, raised in Arizona. As a high school senior, he had 17 home runs. That plus his size might have convinced some people that he could hit him out of sight. Oh, and two. So Mather finds himself in a hole. No balls, two strikes. One thing he has succeeded in doing, he has only struck out 30 times, but he's hitting 223. No balls, two strikes. Little dribbler foul. Mather, who signed with the Cardinals, as we said, in 2001. We're honored to have great National League and American League winning manager Tony La Russa here taking in the ballgame. He probably could tell you about Joe Mather. Castillo at first, one out, 0 and 2. Check swing foul. Well, the pitch count for Clayton Kershaw is up to 104. He's had one game this year when he made 120. For a long, long time, we always thought the maximum number of pitchers would be 125. That's before they really got into counting. Castillo, the catcher, has not been involved in a stolen base. Mather has grounded into three double plays. So if you're thinking about putting on a play with one out, we'll see. Ball one. One and two the count. You know how we talk about swings and misses. Cubs have swung and missed 11. They fouled off 27. Slow curveball. Took a lot off it. And missed by a lot. Two and two the count. The Cubs have fouled off 27 pitches. Joe, a little dribbler. Kershaw to first base in time. Down to second base goes Castillo. And the batter will be the third baseman, Luis Valbuena. Two out. You know, Tuesday, August 21st, the Giants are here. And Fernando Valenzuela bobblehead night. Fans with the first 50,000 ballot tickets can take home their very own mini El Toro. Celebrating his no hitter in 1990. Compliments of State Farm. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. Ah, Fernando, will we ever forget all of the emotion, all of the surprises? A little child shall lead them. That was the feeling back then when he came out of nowhere. Never to be forgotten. Now here's Valbuena for one reason or another. He's been giving Kershaw a bad time because he is a very patient hitter. He takes a strike. He walked in the third inning on eight pitches. And in the fifth inning, he walked on nine pitches. 0 and 1. He might be a little too patient now. No balls and two strikes. So Clayton trying to go right after him. Castillo, the catcher at second base, two down. Might be tough to score him on a base hit. 0 oh 2.
ball one. Castillo also not taking much of a lead. He doesn't have to worry about Mark Ellis. Ellis with a left hand hitter is on the grass. So Hanley Ramirez is still a far far spot away. Kershaw check. One and two the count. Fastball staggers Ellis still one and two. As we as often said the pickoff play at second base starts with the shortstop. He's the one who will make the decision whether he feels that the runner at second base is taking a bigger than normal lead. Then he has his way of flashing the sign to the catcher and then they try to make a play. Might be something simple. Taking your glove off your hand. Whatever. So we're watching Ramirez. You can bet the third base coach, Pat Listach, is also watching Ramirez and the runner. Big curveball, strike three call, 74 miles an hour. Balbuena bailed and couldn't do a thing with it. Strikeout number seven as he gives it the plate, and it's still two to one. Bobby. Let's look at a couple of offers in the Dodger box score. Total it up. Two runs on five hits. The Cubs just one run, three hits, and it came quickly. It was the base hit by Ellis, a three and two fastball to right field. 
and then Matt Camp homers off the glove of Joe Mather in center. Bottom of the seventh with James Loney and a strike. For Chris Bolstad, having made 20 starts without a win, going 0 for 12, he has turned in a great performance no matter what. One ball and one strike. He's allowed two runs, five hits. He has struck out three. And of the five hits, remember, he gave up two hits to Kershaw. Loney, a little dribbler to Darwin Barney. One away. Darwin Barney, remember, if he gets through the game without an error, he would then have played 91. In case you're interested, consecutive errorless games in the National League. David Eckstein, when he played for the Padres, had 113 games without an error. The American League mark. Placido Polanco had 141 consecutive errorless games five years ago. So Barwin's got a long way to go. That's a strike on the corner. Hairston lined to third, hit into a force play. Clayton Kershaw has Ronald Belisario throwing back of him because Clayton has made 112 pitches. Fouled away. So for Clayton 112 his high this year 120 he's had 117 three or four times. So from now on he would be pushing it and Belisario perhaps getting ready. 0 and 2 to Hairston. Just missed with that slider they're going to check no swing. 1 and 2 to Hairston. Jerry batting 281, four home runs, 26 runs batted in. Playing third tonight. Two and two. Light breeze picks up, blowing from left to right. When the Cubs bat in the ninth inning, uh, excuse me, in the uh, eighth inning, Volstad is due up. Two and two. And a high fly ball to left center. Deep but not deep enough for Hairston. And it's Mather there to make the catch. Two out. And the batter will be A.J. Ellis. Looking at the Cubs and trying to guess who might be the hitter. Most pinch hit appearances made by Cardenas. Dale has a few however to choose from. And that's whacked into left center. Mather a diving catch fumbled dropped the ball and holding at first base is Ellis a tremendous effort by Joe Mather but he couldn't hold on to it. What he did do let's face it he saved the base. So Tony Gwynn will be coming up catches it hits the ground and it spills out. So Joe has come so close. And at one time Volstad thought that it was caught but then when his center fielder rolled over you could see the ball on the mound. Meanwhile Joe is fit to be tied. He had a home run go off his glove and now that one off his glove. He's done a great job to get to the ball. And he did take a double away from Ellis. Tony Gwynn will now come up and hit for Clayton Kershaw. So for Clayton Kershaw, he goes out in a tough ball game, leading two to one. He struck out seven, allowed three hits, and one run. Breaking ball strike. Tony Gwynn's role has been reduced severely with the arrival of Shane Beccarino. No more starts. 
no more going into the game in late innings for defensive purposes. So right now, pinch hitter and pinch runner. Little ground ball to Castro to the bag, and that'll be that. So no runs, one hit, the near catch by Mather. That'll do it for Clayton, and we have seven in the books, two to one, Don. Form in the first inning against Anthony Rizzo, then picked up against Soriano and Baker, moved along to get Baker a second time, then picked up number five against Starlin Castro. Soriano went down for the second time, and Balbuena, who had walked twice, finally strikes out, and Clayton walks off with seven Ks, three hits allowed, one earned run, and 112 pitches. Now, Ronald Belisario will take over in relief, and David De Jesus, a left-hand hitting center fielder, will come up. De Jesus last night, 0 for 3 with a walk. However, there's one indication we should take double check of as far as De Jesus. When he walked last night, it was a 10-pitch at bat. So that's the only thing we really know about him. He did show some patience. And a bulldog attitude. So D. Jesus hitting 262. And Belisario ready to go after him. And a strike. 0 and 1. D. Jesus, who had Tommy John surgery a long time ago, he went to school at Rutgers. That's where he underwent the surgery. A Brooklyn boy. Who lives now in Wheaton, Illinois? Fouled away. So for Chris Volstad, first of all, our heart goes out to him. I mean, 20 starts without a win, 0 and 12. He pitched a wonderful game tonight, and he should feel a lot better about himself as he talks to Jeff Samarja, who went down to defeat last night. 0 oh and 2. Fouled away. D. Jesus is an even six, about 185, originally drafted by the Royals. He has been very consistent, hitting 264 at home, 265 on the road. And right now, hitting 262. Having gone over three last night. Oh and two. One and two. Ronald Belisario coming in to try to shut them down. Belisario in his 40th game. 16 walks, 33 strikeouts, so a little better than two to one. Two and two the count. 
Melisario had a stretch June into early July where he did not allow a run in eight consecutive appearances. Two and two. And he goes three and two. He's had 15 what they call holds, meaning he'll pitch and then hand the lead on to the closer. He's got a tough hitter and Starlin Castro on deck. So here's D. Jesus after that 10 pitch at bat last night, goes three and two, no surprise. Foul back. D. Jesus attributes his hardworking father who would come home from work and no time for dinner out they would go and his father would pitch to him till late in the afternoon early evening. Interesting when he was with the Royals he set a record he was hit twice by pitch in the same inning and a little dribbler Belisario will keep it alone. So one away. We're in the eighth inning. Two to one in favor of the Dodgers. Remember the Cubs in one run games on the road are two and twelve. The Dodgers in one run games at home. All of a sudden it's been a struggle. They're twelve and eleven. Starlin Castro grounded out twice, struck out, 0 for 3, hitting 280, and a strike. Castro last night, 0 for 4. So he's looking for his first hit in the series, 0 for 7. Down in the pen, Randy Choate loosening up the left hander. Little roller up along third. Hairston gloves throws on the run and gets a nice play. So the Dodgers shut down Stalin Castro. He's 0 for 8 in the two games. Nice play by Hairston to get him. And Darwin Barney coming up. Considering the lineup, you have to believe Randy Chode is down in the bullpen. Getting ready in case Anthony Rizzo comes up. The so Darwin Barney is trying to keep the door open. Choate is getting ready, and Rizzo waits on deck. Dodgers have reason to prepare ahead for Rizzo, who is hitting 314. So here's Barney, 1 for 3. Right. For Belisario comes in, hits 95 on the gun. Barney has flied the left twice, single a left, and scored the only run for Chicago. Oh and two. That was 96. Barney batting 269. So Belisario throwing strikes. Had to work a little harder with De Jesus. Two runs, six hits for the Dodgers. One run, three hits for the Cubs. All the scoring in the fourth inning. So Belisario comes in. A one, two, three inning. Strikes out one. And we head to the bottom of the eighth. Two to one, Dodgers.
next acquisition from the Phillies. Joe will be on the mound. One thing you like, look at the walks and the strikeouts for Blanton. 18 walks and 115 strikeouts. So you come out here with Joe, and he usually sticks and shreds the strike zone. So it'll be interesting to see his debut tomorrow. Meanwhile, Sean Camp will pick up now. Sean is from Fairfax, Virginia, went to George Mason University, and was originally signed by the Padres. 0 and 1 to Shane Victorino. For Camp, he has really labored for a long time, bounced around in the minors, Clinton, Rancho Cucamonga, Mobile, Portland, Altoona, Nashville. Hit at the shortstop right on by Castro to the gap. Victorino hustling for two. He is in there easily. The flying Hawaiian. So Victorino lines one by Castro and with that gap he was off to the races. The runner at second. Nobody out. Camp is welcomed. And the batter Mark Ellis with Matt Kemp on deck. Mark Ellis tonight flied to right, single to right, struck out. He does such a good job going the other way. Let's see what they have him do. He pulls the bat back for a strike. Mark Ellis only has one sacrifice, and certainly when he was playing every day before he was injured, he was able to move that runner from second to third easily going the other way. So the decision, do you let him swing going the other way, or do you have him bunt? He sure hasn't bunted much. And looking, one and one. Out of all that movement, the message relayed to Wallach on the Victorino and also to Mark Ellis. Valbuena right at the bag. Right behind Victorino is Castro. They took the bunt off on that. Two and one to count. Matt Kemp waiting on deck. Two and one. He's swinging and looking. I think Mark thought that was low. Instead, two balls, two strikes. Well, now you say with two strikes on him, they would take the bunt off. And certainly Balbuena believes that. He backs up at third. Rizzo backs up and wide of the bag at first. And Castro directly behind Victorino. Two and two. Slider, ball three. So a big battle here, and Matt waiting. Camp basically fastball slider, just about a two pitch pitcher. Three and two to Mark Ellis. Two to one Dodgers. Bottom of the eighth. Big crowd. Very quiet. Forty six thousand five hundred and eighty eight. Forty six five eighty eight. Three and two. And he pokes it to the box. Runner has to hold. Out recorded at first. So Ellis unable to move his man. And Matt Kemp coming up, rounded out and struck out, but in between came up in the fourth inning. Went after a breaking ball down and in, 
And it went off Mathis' glove and over the fence for a two-run home run. And that's the difference in the game. Matt with 16 home runs, 41 runs batted in. First base open, and Andre Ethi are on deck. Are they going to pitch to Matt Kemp? Left or right? No, sir. Despite the fact it'll bring up a left-hand batter, they will put Matt Kemp aboard. So the heat will be on Ethier, who had a soft line drive to short, walked and struck out. So Matt getting the silk glove treatment, understandably. Sixth time this year that he's gotten the intentional walk. So in a moment, there will be runners at first and second with one out. So Andre Ethier, 0 for 2 coming up. Looks like we will have a change. They have Scott Main, the left hander in the pen, and we'll be right back. Colorado 11 to 5 looks like they're going to come up with their 58 win so this game is extremely important for the Dodgers trying to hang a half a game back Arizona lost so they're already hurting two and a half back so as soon as we get a final on the Giants you shall have it meanwhile James Russell he's out of Cincinnati Ohio lives in Texas went to the University of Texas he was drafted by the Cubs five years ago. He's the son of former Major League All-Star closer Jeff Russell. And he was originally drafted by the Mariners, but opted to go to junior college and eventually accepted the Cubs offer. Basically, fastball, curveball. They say he has an outstanding changeup. So two on, one out, and Ethier 0 for 2 at the plate. And off the play, ball one. Because you can understand why they bring in a left-hander. Andre, such a wonderful hitter, but struggling against left-hand pitching, although he is two for six in the past. But he's up there hitting 221 against left-handers. And Victorino, a good fake curveball, grounded to Barney. The feed to Castro, the bounce to first, not in time. Castro leaping high in the air, had to throw on a bounce to Rizzo, and just missed the double play, but what a rather acrobatic shortstop show on that play. Ball would not hit hard. Up in the air goes Castro, bounces it, 
And the ball juggled for the moment. And Ethier aboard. So that brings up Hanley Ramirez and James Loney on deck. Would they walk Ramirez and load the bases? If they do, Loney then might give way to Juan Rivera. So let's just wait and see what they do. Just to give you some idea, James Loney is hitting 236 against left handers As far as James Russell is concerned, you want to look up his walks and strikeouts. Russell is 5 and 0. 18 walks, 41 strikeouts, so two and a half to one. And let's see what they decide to do. You have Victorino at third, and Castro Castillo settles into the crowd, so they're going to pitch to Ramirez. Two out, first and third, two to one Dodgers, bottom of the eighth. And a strike. One other thing about Russell, who is certainly in a tough spot, he has one wild pitch. Twenty-six year old left hander. A chip off the old block. Fastball, good block, Castillo. Two runs, seven hits for the Dodgers. One run, three hits for the Cubs. Victorino, who doubled, is at third. Ethier at first. And a one ball, one strike count. Two and one. So Loney is on deck. Whether he would bat if they just pitch around Ramirez remains to be seen. There's Juan Rivera just waiting to get in. So now three and one. You wonder if they even bother or should they put him on? Castillo's in a crouch. Three and one to Hanley Ramirez, two out in the eighth, two to one Dodgers. And as a hopper hard under the glove of Castro. That could have been the third out. Victorino scores and the Dodgers lead three to one. I see you, says Hanley. For Castro, he makes that play, I would think, as hard as hit the ball was. I think he makes this play nine or ten times right under his glove. So we'll save for the scoring, but we do know the Dodgers get a gift run and lead three to one. It'll be an error charge to Castro. So Russell gets a bad break. So do the Cubs. Starlin Castro, the 22 year old. Fails to come up with a ground ball that would have ended the inning. So Loney then stays in. For Starlin Castro, that would be the 16th error that he has made at shortstop. 16. D. Gordon made 17. So the Dodgers get a gift. No run batted in, of course. Dodgers will take it anyway. Low ground ball to Darwin Barney, and the inning is over. But a big run up on the board, thanks to Castro's error. And we head to the ninth, three to one. Yep, I see you too.
football that should have been caught by the two time all star the 22 year old Starlin Castro but his failure to make the play really hurts the Cubs it pretty much takes the bunt away as far as playing for one run Henley Jansen now comes in and he'll be facing Rizzo Soriano and Baker and of course for the Dodgers they get the word the Giants have beaten the Rockies 11 to 6 there were home runs by Melky Cabrera Buster Posey and Angel Pagan Madison Bumgarner won his 12th so the Giants 11 the Rockies 6 and it's up to the Dodgers to keep pace in order to stay a half a game back as we mentioned earlier these are the games that mean so much and Joe Blanton will be on the mound tomorrow going up against Justin Germano. So Kenley Jansen trying to close up shop. Jansen with 20 saves. And a strike. Jansen strike out to walks is four to one. Anthony Rizzo hitting 306. Rizzo tonight struck out in two ground balls. Fouled away. Boy, he has a very casual grip on the bat, doesn't he? Notice it last night. It's almost a ho hum at bat, which I guess somewhat is a sign of inner confidence. Chokes up a little bit. But he just holds it so relaxed like I almost going to drop it on home plate. Instead, he strokes it to left. Victorino fighting the lights made the catch. He got a great jump on the ball, and all of a sudden it was in the lights. <laughs> you can see him shaking his head. Wow. Matt Kemp hollering over to him. So it was a tough play. Good jump, and then where's the ball? Right there in the lights. The so Rizzo, a fly ball to left, one down. Well, they start in the low minors with bad lights, poor lights, bright lights in the big leagues, and they learn along the way. Here's Soriano. Strike. That's a big play. He wouldn't want Soriano coming up there representing the tying run. Soriano with 19 home runs. Oh, and one. Soriano has struck out twice tonight. He has struck out 96 times. He struck out once last night. He doubled in. The only Cub run back in the fourth inning. So Soriano strikes out three times tonight, four times in the two games. Brian LaHare will be coming up. It was just fastball, about chest high, and Soriano unable to catch up to it. And now Brian LaHare, the left-hand hitting right fielder, last night he struck out twice, doubled, and walked. The crowd of 46,588 trying to come up with the last out. Dodgers trying to remain a half a game back of the Giants. That'll make tomorrow's game even more important. One more day coming off the calendar. And a strike. To repeat, Joe Blanton and Justin Germano. Germano one and one, an ERA of three. Has only been in two games. He had one in the American League. Oh and one. And another strike. So Kershaw struck out seven. Belisario got one. That makes it eight. Jansen has one to make it nine. And he has LaHare 0 oh and 2. Got it. So LaHare is caught looking. Down he goes. And the Dodgers now do what they must do. 
beat the teams that are struggling, and they beat the Cubs three to one. Three runs, seven hits for the Dodgers. One run, three hits, and one error for the Cubs. The winner is Clayton Kershaw. He is nine and six. Kershaw three and one lifetime against the Cubs. Chris Volstad pitched so well in pursuit of his first win in 21 starts. He allowed two runs, and it was just enough for him to lose. So the Dodgers three runs, seven hits. And for Starlin Castro, of course, thinking about the error that gave the Dodgers the third run. But the way Jansen set the Cubs down in the top of the ninth, one run or two, he did it with nine pitches, all strikes. And the Cubs were just not able to compete in that particular situation. So tomorrow afternoon on KCAL 9, Joe Blanton, Justin Germano. Hope you'll be out here, and if not, we'll send it to you. Until then, we wish you all a very pleasant good evening.